Today's perilous overclocking shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. This is a very special iMac G3. At 700 megahertz, it's the fastest one that Apple ever released. And today, we're gonna use my new toy, soldering hot tweezers, to fiddle around with incredibly tiny surface mount motherboard components to see just how fast we can overclock this thing or ruin it. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy tiny, fragile components and the ever-present threat of irreversible damage, make sure to hit subscribe. The last time we had this very special iMac G3 out, we were installing the latest version of OpenBSD. That's right, a fully modern operating system that still supports this ancient architecture. If you want to see those experiments and learn more about this particular machine, check out that video right here. But for our experiments today, I've reinstalled macOS 10.4 Tiger, mainly because I'd like to take some Geekbench benchmarks. I also want to see how much faster it runs a very special version of Minecraft. I mean, unless I absolutely murder this thing with these inexpensive tweezers. Now, if you look past the fact that we're dealing with incredibly tiny surface mount components, this should actually be a very easy overclock. In fact, there's a really great video from Renoa that really gave me the confidence to try this out for myself. I'll link that down in the description below. Now, taking this thing apart should actually be pretty easy, mainly because I never really finished putting it back together from the last time we took this apart. Got the old LTT screwdriver. Yes, I did buy this with my own money. And the PLL resistors are actually right here. There's four of them. A little hard to see. Let me put on my special bubbles glasses. So these are the four resistors that we need to adjust to control the speed of the CPU. And you can see there is a high and a low. And basically this is binary. So high is one, low is zero. And again, thanks to the Renoa video, we can see what the binary values are for different multipliers. Now I do actually want to take the board out so I can repaste the CPU as well, since we are going to be putting some more power through it. Dinky little thermal pad on there. So I'm going to clean this CPU up with some isopropyl alcohol. And then I think I'm just going to use some new thermal pad because the old thing was a thermal pad and I want to make sure that we don't have any gap in between thermal paste and the other side of that aluminum. Now according to the data sheet these are set for a 7x multiplier which makes sense because this is the 700 megahertz version and the bus speed is 100 so 7 times 100 is 700. So I'm going to set this to 7.5x, which hopefully gives us 750. Just need to power up our fancy tweezers. And I just need to move two of these to change it to a binary one from a binary two. All right, a little bit finicky. I uh, wish the tweeze prongs were a little thinner, but I suppose that's something I can probably find. In any event, we got there in the end, and I think it's time to see if we have completely destroyed this thing. Right after this word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started, like say I wanted to build a website dedicated to overclocking vintage Apple computers. I could build it in just minutes with Squarespace's new next generation fluid engine. 
which features powerful drag and drop technology and enables you to customize every detail of your customer's experience on desktop and mobile. That's on top of optimizing for SEO, managing a mailing list, watching analytics, and much more. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, good old sideways boot test. I chimed. <laughs> All right, well, uh, it booted. Let's see what our clock speed is. 750. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a benchmark at 750, uh, mainly to see if it crashes. And then we're going to try to push it even further which means I actually have to move all of these. All right, I think I'm getting better at this. <laughs> Those are all connected, no bridge. All right, 800 megahertz sideways smoke test, and I'm just gonna stick a little USB fan here. Uh, <laughs> just to see if we can help it out a little bit, staying cool. Ah, chimed! <laughs> oh, it's looking good. Oh, show me that glorious 800. Yes! <laughs> it says 800. Oh my goodness. All right, well, I guess I'm gonna <laughs> run the benchmarks and see if it crashes. All right, well, the benchmark's completed and it has been running for like 15 minutes. So I'm gonna say this is stable. <laughs> we'll compare all the benchmarks when we find the limit of this thing, but do we dare push further? We dare. All right, once again, sideways smoke test. It chimed. No way is it gonna let me push it this far. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I did it the wrong way. We're running at 550 megahertz. Ah, the joys of overclocking. All right, resistor is swapped the correct way around. I put it at 1001 instead of 0110, but fix that and sideways smoke test Let's see what happens. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, there it goes. It chimed! <laughs> 450 megahertz. Son of a gun. Well, I guess this would be a pretty boring video if I did everything right the first time. Anyway, let's try this higher setting for the third time. Huh, no chime. All right, I've got the fan right next to the CPU now. Let's give this one last shot. I dare say we have found the limit. It does not want to do 900. And I don't think there's an option for 850. Okay, now before we put this thing back together, I am a little bit concerned about heat. I mean, this CPU was nice enough to give us a whole 100 extra megahertz, and this iMac famously has no fan. So I do have a nice little thin 12 volt fan here, and uh, one of these little fan to Molex guys that's nice and small. My thought is underneath the drives here, there is room, it looks like enough room for this fan, and there's holes in there. And since the aluminum back there is basically being used as a heat sink, I think if we just move some air through it, that can make a big difference. Just make sure the thing actually spins before we put everything back together. Beautiful. 
Ah, look at that. You'd never know there was a fan in there. Perfect. All right, here we go. Our new 800 megahertz iMac G3. 100 megahertz faster than the fastest one that Apple ever released. And I am quite pleased. Well, as long as this starts up now that I've put it all the way back together. Hooray! So the stock CPU at 700 megahertz scored a 320. At 750, that was up to 340. And at 800, we have a whopping 374. That is a big difference, 320 to 374 in the CPU benchmarks in Geekbench 2. And now the big question. Okay, let's take a quick look at pre-overclock performance. And we're gonna do that in Classic Cube, which if you're not familiar, it is a re-implementation of Minecraft Classic in C and C++. Here we are getting 11, 12 frames per second. Honestly, shockingly playable for this kind of machine. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, put this into maximized view. Let the world load in. Okay, so I think we may have gained uh, one or two FPS with our little experiment here. Which, okay, isn't a huge difference, but you know, the joy is in the numbers. Oh no, it crashed! <laughs> Overclocking. Okay, adding on to our cooling solution, I have this USB fan, which I'm going to sit over top of these vents and plug into USB here so we can really suck the air out of here and try to keep it cool. All right, well, the good news is it seems a lot more stable. The bad news is it's much louder, but I think we probably can chalk this up to thermal management on this overclocked CPU. And since uh, it seems that fans at the top of the case drawing air out makes a difference, Maybe I can take this top case off and just mount two nice quiet Noctua fans up there. Okay, so even though it seems like we still have some thermal issues in this notoriously fanless iMac G3, I'm gonna chalk this up as an enormous success because this thing is stable at 800 megahertz, 100 megahertz over its fastest iteration, as long as we have these fans sitting on the back of it. But I don't think we're done yet because I got to talking to my friend DOSDude1 who gave me the idea of salvaging a faster rated G3 CPU out of an iBook Snow White. So we might be able to find a 900 megahertz rated CPU that will fit into this thing with some surface mount soldering and maybe even clock up to a gigahertz. Even better, I think we might at some point in the near future wind up with a G4 iMac G3. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, George Rosansky, Greg Hrutke, Harris Brody, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Pipas, Jason Ezel, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping make these videos possible.